You probably saw this one coming. We've just taken a look at the best of every Smash Ultimate move, and as difficult as that list was to make, oh my god, this was so much worse. Nothing like trying to analyze a big old pile of obscure moves nobody uses or talks about. Let's see how it turned out. Alright, similar ground rules as last time, here's our definition for worst move. Picture a randomized character with any combination of other attacks and attributes. They're about to spin a wheel to select their final attack, but before that, they're allowed to strike one move off the wheel to guarantee they won't get it. Repeat for many, many random characters which move gets struck most often. That's what I'm considering the worst, which is a fancy way of saying we're judging these moves purely in a vacuum, with no regard for the role they play in their source character's kit. Now, I fully expect the reception to some of these choices to be mixed. Sometimes the answer is obvious, but sometimes it's extremely ambiguous. The mains of some of these characters will go, haha, yep, sure does suck, and others will be outraged that I dare suggest such a thing. Either is fine, just remember that a lot of these attacks still have a role to play in their character's kit, and I am aware of this. I also had mains of all kinds asking where heroes down B was in the best moves equivalent of this video despite the selection criteria excluding him, so let's run through that again. Any attack that uses a resource or technique that extends outside the scope of that attack is not eligible for this list. Anything that uses mana? Ineligible. Command inputs? Ineligible. Separate characters? Ineligible. The purpose of this is to avoid having to invent scenarios in ambiguous situations. What happens if your character gets limit charge but doesn't have cross slash? Does their other side B get supercharged? If so, what does that look like? If you ever need to ask a question like this, the move is off the table. Finally, a surprising amount of people wanted throws covered last time, but I mean, this one's good because it keeps you close, this one's bad because it sends you far, this one's good again because it sends you really far. Wow, how amazing and interesting too. All right, let's kick things off. Jabs overall rarely play more than a filler close combat role in a character's kit, but it's fair to expect them to do more than Samus's 1-2 that's really just a 1. Bizarrely, the two hits of this jab don't actually combo into each other, even at high percent, so your actual jab is just this. Now, as with many moves you'll be seeing throughout this video, Samus's jab certainly isn't useless. It does have good range and comes out on frame 3, but it's still very hard to argue in its favor when you compare it to the reward a good or even average jab lands for you. Forward tilts are usually fairly straightforward moves, but the one I've chosen here is actually one of the least straightforward ones, in this case to his detriment. Bayonetta's Kick Flurry has solid damage output and range, but is also horribly slow. Now, that's not unheard of for forward tilts, but these attacks tend to kill as compensation for their poor startup, something that Bayonetta will essentially never be able to do. Worst of all, though, while the kicks suit her origin game and certainly look flashy, they also give opponents plenty of opportunities to pop right out, which gives the attack an abysmal risk-reward ratio between that, the slow startup, and its it's very poor safety on shield. Down tilts are typically solid or even excellent attacks, so much so that even after combing through every single one on the roster, I couldn't find a genuinely awful one. But someone needs to go in this position, and I think Jigglypuff is the most underwhelming option to work with. Let's look at the roles down tilts commonly play for a character. Does Jigglypuff's two frame? No. Does it start combos? No. Does it work as a poke in the neutral game? Uh kind of, but its poor range and speed leave a lot to be desired there. It's a difficult move to connect, and the reward isn't particularly great for doing so. While it does send at a very low angle, that's not nearly the same kind of payoff other difficult-to-land down tilts provide, and its kill power isn't anything to write home about. As said, it does have its place, but in a world where down tilts are staple attacks for many characters, it's pretty hard to get excited over. It's Ganondorf. Up tilt goes to Ganondorf, and let's just skip ahead for a moment. Neutral B also goes to Ganondorf. I think these choices should be pretty self-explanatory, but if you're interested in more detail, I'd recommend checking out this video, which goes over these kinds of big, powerful moves. Ganondorf's up tilt and Warlock Punch are prominently featured alongside a comprehensive look at their potential uses, as well as why those uses aren't good enough. Quick dash attacks tend to be good or at least well-worn moves, where slow ones tend to be used very sparingly, and King Dedede's is the slowest ultimate has to offer, which I also think makes it the worst. Now, in the context of Dedede's particular moveset, that's not necessarily the case. Because he specializes in traps, especially at the ledge, he actually gets a surprising amount of use out of the famous belly flop. Remember, though, that we're not judging moves in context. Very few characters would have access to anywhere near the ledge pressure that Goros provide, and while there may be a rare configuration which would prefer this to a 
more standard dash attack, I think for the majority of characters giving up a burst movement option would be a heavy cross to bear. The closest contender here was Link, bringing more aerial coverage and a faster speed up against DDD's generous two-frame potential. Both attacks obliterate anyone they do manage to connect with, but I think most characters would have access to and lean on a faster two-framing tool, so Link sneaks out of this one, and obviously the same logic applies to Hero. And our contender for Forward Smash continues along a similar theme. Snake's RPG Blast is incredibly strong, but also incredibly slow, and Snake squeezes use out of it in a way that most characters couldn't. It's only one frame slower than King DDD's Hammer Swing, which was also heavily considered, but lacks that move's sweet spot punch and aerial coverage, with the loss of sour spots not being nearly enough to compensate. Ultimate has plenty of other Forward Smashes with only a bit less payoff, but dramatically better frame data, and faster but weaker smash attacks often play a role in whiff punishing, which is something that Snake can almost never do. Down smashes tend to be some combination of quick, safe, and large. And if you take all of these away, you're left with Wario. While his breakdancing seems to be an attempt to one-up Mario's impressive moves, like most of his efforts, it's fallen apart quite badly, and we're left with a limp ground spin with unimpressive range, power, speed, and the unfortunate title of one of the least safe moves in Smash. This attack takes more than a full second to complete, and blocking one hit means you don't need to block the rest, so if Wario's Dance Smash whiffs or is shielded, which is gonna happen a lot due to its frame 8 startup and small hitbox, you're about to eat one hell of a punish. While basically all up smashes play at least some role as an anti-air, even the ones most aggressively tuned in this direction tend to be usable to a certain degree against grounded opponents. This does not apply to Hero. His upward sword stab lacks any meaningful coverage from the blade, as well as losing the grounded launchers similar moves tend to have, meaning that it's strictly limited to use as an anti-air or pressuring opponents on platforms. It doesn't even really excel here, though. Against opponents on platforms, you need to position yourself very specifically, meaning that it struggles to cover multiple options in, say, a tech situation. In anti-air territory, the strictly vertical hitbox doesn't cover jumping approaches, and even reasonably strong opponents are rarely going to try and land directly on top of you. It's also essentially useless as an out-of-shield option, which is the other role up smashes tend to play. Hero was in competition for this placement with similarly inflexible up smashes, namely Donkey Kong, the Belmonts, and Isabelle. That said, DK's hand clap kills considerably earlier 7 out of 8 times and is less committal, the Belmonts increased range grants them additional utility, and while Isabelle's blind spot is vertical rather than horizontal, that's generally a good trade-off, as opponents will be on the ground or jumping at you more often than they'd be stuck on a platform or coming straight down. Alright, let's be honest, Little Mac clearly has the worst aerials. They're explicitly designed to be awful, and this really isn't up for debate. That doesn't make for an overly interesting video, though, so we're gonna run this section through for first runner-up, with the understanding that none of these are my actual choice for worst aerial in their category. So, from the top. Neutral airs are pretty much all at least solid. Apart from one, there really isn't a legitimately bad move in the punch. This made choosing one the hardest task I had throughout this video, in a good way, and I ultimately had to settle on Olimar. While fairly quick, this move is also tiny, making it a poor option out of shield and a go-to move slot for this purpose. Like most neutral airs, it does act as a combo starter, and due to its multi-hit nature, can actually set up combos at later percents than most of its competitors. This only applies to very strict spacings, though, and outside of this combo role, unfortunately, its launch angle, knockback, and inconsistent hitboxes give it essentially no functionality either as a kill move or edgeguarding tool. Bayonetta was considered because of the extreme landing leg and low kill power of her spin kick, although it's still a large attack that has its role in edgeguarding and air-to-air -air scenarios. Duck Hunt's cartwheel meets the bare minimum standards for a regular neutral air, but does meet them. Zelda's magical spin is notoriously inconsistent, but when it does work, the reward is much higher. It's a close call, but considering Olimar's neutral air is one of the few attacks that doesn't use the mechanic which makes him powerful, it shouldn't be too shocking to see him here. Forward airs of all kinds are often staples of a character's neutral game, and if you're gonna give that up, you'd hope to get something else good in return. Snake's Axe Kick definitely has a lot of payoff if you land it, but at 23 frames of wind-up, the slowest in ultimate, this is asking quite a lot, even with Snake's niche trap setups which most characters wouldn't be able to utilize. While Meta Knight's forward air is underwhelming, Pitts has criminally small hitboxes, and Mr. Game & Watches can be completely snuffed out, these attacks all still have at least some contribution to the character's game plan, something that you can't say about Snake the vast majority of the time. Backers are again overall great moves, and there aren't any true duds outside of Little Mac, but I think Piranha Plant comes closest. Does it kill? Yes, but that applies to the vast majority of back airs in the game. Does it have a decent hitbox? Yes, but again, the competition is stiff. Still, this move seems at least fine. 
until you try and use it high in the air, when you realize that the animation takes more than a second to finish for no justifiable reason. Here, watch me fast fall off the ledge with back air, a common edge guarding technique. I'm mashing jump in this clip. Hero is in direct contention for the choice due to the higher initial startup of his Sword Slash, which lacks quite the same raw kill power, but is saved by the move's more generous hitbox, higher safety on shield, and less overall commitment, meaning that while you need to initially space your back air from further away, you're not a complete sitting duck if it does miss. The vast, vast majority of down airs are some combination of spike, landing hitbox, and stall and fall, and while all of these are relatively specific tools, I think stall and falls are the most specific. Which means the next task is to single one out of the group, and I ended up going with Sonic. These attacks are often pretty similar to each other, so here's a run through of every stall and fall in the game and why they didn't make the cut. Ridley's comes out much faster and kills, Two Links has a disjoint and kills, Banjo's is much faster and has a disjoint, Bayonetta's kills and has a much larger hitbox, Bowser's kills and has a disjoint, Korin's is much faster and sets up easier kamikaze situations, Greninja's has combo potential and bounces off shields along with the Belmonts, Mr. Game and watches is much faster, kills and has a disjoint, Sheik is faster, and so is Zero Suit Samus. There are some characters that would choose a poor stall and fall over, say, a poor spike, but overall I think they're outnumbered. Also, when I put out a tweet about this video, I predictably had some people bring up Ridley, but I disagree with the reputation this attack has gained. Compared to other stall and falls, it's quite fast at frame 11 and has respectable kill power. For up air, we're gonna break our selection criteria a bit and choose King K rule, and here's why I'm comfortable doing so. These restrictions were put in place because their absence makes the function of the move too open to interpretation in a vacuum and therefore too difficult to judge the balance of. In this case, though, it doesn't matter how you interpret the armor mechanic. Let's be as optimistic as possible and say that a random character gets the armor free of charge, no cracking possible. I still give the placement to it. Now, this attack does have its strengths. K Roll's head is intangible at the start of the move, he lunges fairly high, and hits pretty damn hard when he manages to swat someone out of the air. If he misses, though, unlike with most up airs, there's no further opportunity to create pressure due to the absurd 71 frames the move takes to finish. Well over a second and putting K Roll into a pseudo freefall unheard of on an aerial. This also makes it quite dangerous to try and use near the ground, and it was already one of the least useful landing up. K Roll may have a mean headbutt, but it's also one of the most strictly defined, rigid moves we've seen in Smash. I am aware that a lot of people would choose Sonic Scissor Kick for this position due to its consistency issues, but even with this in mind, I still consider it a far more versatile and overall usable tool. Having already brought up Warlock Punch, we turn to Side Special and are greeted with Yoshi trying his best. Egg Roll does virtually nothing. It takes over half a second to start up, is useless for recovery, deals the same damage as a lot of tilt attacks, doesn't combo, doesn't kill, takes forever to wind down. Throughout the video I've been trying to emphasize that a move's appearance on this list doesn't mean it has no use, and while that's still technically true for egg roll, it's pushing its luck a bit on this one. For down B, the chameleon of the special move category, I've sadly once again gotta go with a really cool attack. Ridley Skewer. This is another one of these big moves which are awesome to land, but ultimately not particularly practical for obvious reasons. That said, compared to the lesser aspects of Ganondorf's kit showed off earlier, Skewer overall has more utility in setups due to its increased speed, again covered pretty comprehensively in this video if you're interested in further details. Kirby was a contender here, but Stone's ability to bypass many juggling scenarios is overall more consistently useful, and it has other applications as well. And as we end this video on the recovery special slot, we end this video without a recovery special. Jigglypuff's Sing works fine in the context of her kit, but exclusively here due to her unique combination of many jumps and extreme airspeed. There's a reason that not a single other character has an up special design in this way. Even in a different move slot, Sing wouldn't be a contender for the top. High risk, high reward moves rarely are, even with such an extreme reward and a few semi-reliable setups, but removing a recovery option in exchange would spell disaster for the vast majority of fighters. Now, admittedly, this decision is partially an artifact of the selection criteria chosen for this video, any methodology is going to distort results one way or another. I believe overall that judgment in a vacuum is the most objective way to evaluate an attack though, and given this criteria and the fact that Sing is a niche move to begin with, it clearly takes the title. So, just for fun, let's look at the monstrosity we'd get if a character's wheel happened to land on every attack we've just gone over. They'd have the jab of Samus, forward tilt of Bayonetta, down tilt of Jigglypuff, up tilt of Ganondorf, dash attack of King Dedede, forward smash of Snake, 
Down Smash of Wario, Up Smash of Hero, every single one of Little Max Aerials, Ganondorf's Warlock Punch, Yoshi's Egg Roll, Ridley's Skewer, and Jigglypuff's Sing. Your only vaguely usable neutral tools would deal no damage, landing kill moves would be nearly impossible, and you would die the second your feet left the ground. I'm pretty comfortable saying we've created the worst Smash character of all time at this point. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Honestly, mostly for fun. Nothing I've said here is meant in any way to disparage anyone's main. God knows mine has his fair share of problems. On top of that, though, these kinds of videos act as a great excuse to dive into the mechanics and meta of Smash. I know I always come away from making them with fresh insight into some of these characters, and if I've done my job right, hopefully you can say the same about watching it. Speaking of which, thanks for watching, everyone, and hey, if you liked it, why not leave a like? This video was... Come exhausting on, on. to make, and I know full well some of these categories have several valid choices, so let me know how your list lines up with mine in the comments. But before that, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more Smash content, follow me on Twitter at MrMockRock to see what I'm up to, and check me out on Patreon for exclusive content including a commentary track for this video, we actually went over the creation process behind this outro sequence in the last one, to join the community on Discord, as well as for other cool rewards. Later, people! Uh oh. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? While platform fighters usually have more conservative movesets than traditional entries, that's still a hell of a lot of moves to create. A lot of jabs, a lot of smash attacks, a lot of special moves. So who got it the best? Good old Tearless, a nice clean way of displaying the strengths of each character in a competitive game, or as of the last few months, really anything at all. Just because we're all using the same format though, doesn't mean